Hey everyone, I'm Andy from Our Dad Plays. And I'm Jason. And today we're going to go over the ODP Legends League post-draft analysis. So first we're going to start with pod B, that's your pod. And we're going to get it started with Andrew and the Killer Kongs. You want to go over the strengths? Actually, we should let Brixie do this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, the way this works is, um, as you see okay. these slides, these teams drafted in this order. So Andrew's first pick was Rillaboom, and so that's kind of the way it goes. Not always uh, in this order, but yes. uh, Andrew's first pick was Rillaboom, which shows that um, this is going to be a strong Pokemon this season. So he's got strong offensive team with Reshiram, Durant, uh, Rillaboom, Duraludon. Well, um, also great offensive coverage uh, with those Pokemon. And he's got a lot of resistances. If you look, I mean, he's got, uh, you know, four times, you know, resist electric, five times against grass. I mean, if you just go down the line, five times against steel, five times against bugs. So really a lot of things that are going to be really strong this season. Yes, and it's worth noting he has the most resistances of anyone in the entire draft league. So oh, in both, both, pods? both pods A and wow. B. So That's great. Very good. Yeah, but along with that come some weaknesses. Correct, and those weaknesses are going to be a very tough match against fire Pokemon. With Pokemon like Rillaboom, Durant, and Togedemaru being two times weak and four times weak to fire, it's going to be really tough. Another thing to consider is that there is almost zero speed control on this team. Uh, one of the Pokemon unlisted, Mimikyu, does have Trick Room, but other than that, not very much speed or um, any other coverage for the speed control. Blast is going to be a huge weakness to ground Pokemon with almost no resists, and so that's going to be one thing to look out for is ground Pokemon. Yep. And the uh, we always list the, the two Pokemon that you'll see listed off on the side are the other Pokemon. We drafted eight Pokemon. You're going to bring, uh, the teams will bring six every week and then uh, obviously four to the match. So we just tried to pick the best six that we could evaluate and make the most well-rounded as far as defensive coverage. And so um, there's always going to be two that are left over and they'll be good matchup depending on who your opponent is each week. But as far as this evaluation, we just this is how we did it. And Andy evaluated the pod that I'm in, pod B, and I evaluated his team, pod A. So, um, But we'll both comment on both of, of the teams, so on the team. Excellent. So, yeah. So with that, we go to the boys, your team. Yeah, my team. <laughs> yep. So I'll let you take care of this one. Of course. We're going to go into the strengths. Uh, incredible offense and defensive coverage. We've got a huge amount of resist over here and very little weaknesses. And then we got very offensive cores like the Kartana, Xerneas, and Rotom being able to hit all of those Pokemon for super effective. We got great speed control with the Suicune able to set up Tailwind and awesome screen support with the Klefki, the F Reflect, and Light Screen. And the weaknesses we're looking at though are uh, no weather control. So maybe having some potential issues with stopping weather mm -hmm. uh some setup pokemon so things like geomancy we got nasty plot uh tailwind etc and then we got um competing dynamax pokemon so you take a look kartana rotom swampert xerneas they all like to dynamax that being said only one of them can dynamax per game i know it would be really nice if i could dynamax <laughs> and as far as no weather control it's a good thing i don't face a rain team like this week oh, oh wait yep. a minute i do <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that goes and the two Pokemon that I have uh, that were not shown here are Umbreon and Togetic. So maybe a little redirection support. But other than that, yeah, it doesn't really help me as far as the defensive coverage. So Excellent. Yeah. We'll get into the next team, Misty Mountain Dragonites. Yeah, so Elizabeth dra drafted third in our league, and I thought she had a really good draft. Uh, she picked up uh, Sogaleo or Sogaleo, however you want to say it. <laughs> um, but she had she has great redirection. That's one of her big strengths. Uh, really great offensive coverage. She's got Dragonite. You know, um, she's got Blastoise, you know, if that thing gets off a of power up, you know how that goes. Yeah. Um, you know, Tapu Bulu, who's really underrated. Plus, she's got lots of great resists. She's, she resists, um, you know, if you look, she's got ground resist for Pokemon. Yep. She can bring up the grassy terrain. She's got five resists for grass. I mean, almost her whole team. Uh, so it's really great. And then she's got the speed control with Talonflame. And then she can max Togekiss, get off some Airstream, more speed control there. Exactly. Now, the weaknesses mm. in terms of her team are pretty much all Pokemon-based. Not so much, uh, you know, Trick Room or Speed Control or anything like that. 
mainly just Pokemon to watch out for. So we're looking at electric type Pokemon are going to be rough matchups with only one resist and three weaknesses. We also got ice type with one four times weak, that being that Dragonite, and then we got two weak and two resist. So three for a total of the resist on ice. Uh, and then we got rock types. We got three weak to rock and only one rock resist being that Solgaleo. So not insane um, matchup weaknesses, but is going to have to look out for the occasional rock slide or blizzard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the two Pokemon that she has on the bench right now are Luxray and Nihilego, which we know, I mean, Nihilego can be a real problem if you don't take care of it. So really great draft overall by Elizabeth. Next up, we got Sky Pillar Guardians, Joshua J. His... Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, Joshua J, man. I mean, great offensive coverage. Another really good draft. Picked up Dialga with Whimsicott. Um, you've probably seen some of these teams on the ladder right now. Yes. Um, also got top, uh, Tapu Koko and Arcanine. And then has uh, Defiant Pokemon in Obstagoon. So that's going to be nice if someone comes out and tries to do some kind of, you know, intimidate on them. Then they can, you know, roll that out there to start with. Really good synergy between it, too. He's got, you know, Whimsicott, Dialga. He's got the Gorgeist, the Obstagoon, you know. So he can really play with those four and, and do good things. Obviously, speed control. I mean, probably the best speed control Pokemon out there. I agree. Yep. I mean, Whimsicott gets Tailwind. It also gets Trick Room. You know, Gorgeis can can offer some in that in that area as well. Um, and then, um, as far as the uh, well, as far as the weaknesses, go ahead. Yeah, the weaknesses. So we, uh, it's not. I guess the the best way to say it is he isn't weak to teams that have Trick Room. He's weak in Trick Room. Right. Uh, he's got three Pokemon that can actually set or reverse Trick Room, even in prison, if he wanted to. However, it might be tough if he gets into that situation in Trick Room to get himself out of it, as he has quite a few faster Pokemon in terms of the speed category. Uh, we're also seeing a weakness to ground Pokemon, common in the couple yeah, first tough. ones. Uh, ground Pokemon are definitely, definitely uh, good Pokemon, and being weak to them isn't ideal, but I think there are definitely ways to get around it, especially with the two resist, being that Gorgeist and Whimsicott. Uh, the last note I have for this one, for the weaknesses, is there are quite a few supportive Pokemon. It can definitely be tempting to choose quite a few supportive Pokemon, but uh, sometimes you might find yourself finding a uh, unbalance with the amount of offensive coverage you're dealing with. Yeah, and I, and I think I know what you're saying about the about the trick room is like yes somebody pulls trick room on you if your only solution is to reverse the trick room you may not have that pokemon left or on the field at the time exactly so, yep so landers incarnate's going to be in the back um for josh and then also thunderous therian so both really good options but really doesn't add a lot to the weakness uh the defensive coverage here i agree so, yeah okay and next we've got uh this is kyle and the lumios city shockers so uh, Kyle had a, also a really interesting draft. He's got kind of really diverse team, pretty interesting. Um, I was looking at it. Uh, it's going to be one of those teams hard to face because you're like, what could he start? Um, he's, his strengths are redirection. He's got one of the best redirection Pokemon out there. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think he took it in the first round. That was Amoongus. Yes. So it's got it's the ultimate sleep mon, redirection mon. It's got lots of, he's got lots of support Pokemon. He's got Alchemy. He's got Cofagrigus. And uh, to go along with the Amoongus. Um, and then we'll talk about the other ones he's got. We, we don't even have out here yet. Yeah. And then he's got great offensive pressure with Dusk, uh, Duskmane Necrozma. And also Marowak and Dracovish. Which Dracovish, you know, with Fishius Rend, it just hits like a truck. Exactly. And just quick, we're going to glance over these weaknesses. Uh, you'll notice that Ghost Pokemon and Dark Pokemon are both on here. Yeah. Both pretty similar in terms of uh, offensive coverage. So if he finds himself facing a ghost type or a dark type, he pretty much knows they can, they can, uh, they can be handled with the same way. So that's yeah. one thing to note about this. Uh, the main weakness coming from this team is a lack of Dynamax candidates. We got two Dynamax candidates that are very prominent. We got the Marowak and we got the Duskmane Necrozma. But other than that, I'm seeing quite a few support Pokemon and Dracovish, who we know is not a particular Dynamax candidate yeah, of it, sorts. It, it loses power, right, when you Dynamax? It does, yeah. with Fishius Rend, at least. Yeah. yeah. 
So, yep. And then the uh, the two Pokemon that he has, which are kind of more of those supportive Pokemon, is Lipard um, and uh, Gotharita. Yeah. And so, um, first time in our draft league that Gotharita's been picked. So, I'm kind of curious to see what he's got. I think he's got something. Uh, Kyle's a very, very uh, savvy player. Been, been playing for a long time. So, I'm really curious to see what he's got cooked up with this team. I agree. So, yep. Next, we got the Idaho Impidimps. We got Micah. And I uh, apologize for the uh, graphic. They don't have Regilecki on Maryland, but we got <clears> Regilecki, <throat> Ho-Oh Lapras, Ferrothorn, Stack Attacka, some very good offensive coverage between those Pokemon. We got Regilecka Buzz. <laughs> yeah, yep, Regilecka Buzz. And then we got uh, we got incredible speed control with the uh, Regilecki, as we all know, and then Stack Attacka being able to set up Trick Room. And then not many people know this, but Volcarona is actually a redirection Pokemon, so not only known for its strong heat waves, but also for its great redirection. Yeah, Rage Powder. I had it um, back, I think, was it season one? I think. Season uh, one? One or two. Yeah. And it's really good. It's really good for redirection um, because I think that's it because people don't expect it. And then, uh, so going through some of the weaknesses, uh, Water Pokemon could be an issue uh, for this team. He's got three Pokemon that are weak to it. Obviously, you've got the you know, Rock Pokemon and Stack Attack, uh, and then you got the Volcarona and the Ho-Oh. And then you've got Fighting Pokemon. You've got three Pokemon weak to Fighting, uh, adding the Ferrothorn and the Lapras. And then also obviously uh, Rock, um, a Rock weakness. Uh, you're adding in Ho-Oh, Lapras, and then the Volcarona. Yes. So um, that's going to be of concern. So we've got, um, and those are those are Pokemon. The, the the reason those are of concern is those are Pokemon, really strong Pokemon, highly drafted. You're probably going to want to bring to most of those uh, things. And those are those are moves that are on a lot of Pokemon right now. So he may want to look at a way to kind of address that going forward. So, and the two Pokemon that we didn't talk about, which do offer a little speed control, right? Latias. Yes. Um, and uh, can, and more speed control than what he's already mm -hmm. got. And Cantonian Slowbro. So um, maybe thinking of something kind of with some synergy there with Lapras, I guess. Agreed. So, okay. Next, we got Behemoth Blocks, Cameron. which is Cameron's team. Yep. You want to go over the strengths for this team? Yeah, absolutely. So Cameron came right out and drafted Titar and Dracozolt back-to-back and probably would have got another sand type had somebody not picked it in front of him. So I'm really glad that happened because I was watching, and I'm sure other people were watching, um, but uh, I was worried about him getting Dracovish, and it didn't happen. <laughs> so uh, so thanks to whoever picked Dracovish. We, we just went over it a couple yep. picks back, but uh, thank you for that because we were I was getting a little worried there. But um, the uh, so weather control and abuse, he's going to be able to really, really control the weather uh, big time with the sand. Um, Dracos are getting that ability this this last couple of uh, um, series, so that's nice. Mm -hmm. Great offensive coverage. You guys know Titar is really good in this uh, in this series. Um, it just it's just really great. You could slap a weakness policy on it, and it's excellent. Uh, Zamazenta is really good because it gets coaching. It's it's uh, one of the great support Pokemon yep. um, that he has on his team. Hit on top gets wide guard, fake out. Another great support Pokemon. Lele. Uh, can change the terrain, keep you from getting fake out or doing nasty things to you with Prankster. Uh, so he's got really good support and offensive coverage all, and, uh, and weather control. So really three really key things for his team. But what about the weaknesses? So some of the main weaknesses, as comes with any weather, you're going to have to worry about competing weathers. So definitely going to have a struggle with Pokemon teams like Kyogre and Groudon being that you can't necessarily rely on the, on the sand with your Draco Zolt all the time. Another thing is there's, uh, outside of the sand rush, there is very little speed control. Yeah. Um, not, a, not a lot of Pokemon that can uh, set Trick Room or, or Tailwind or even reverse any of those. Um, and the last thing to note is that there's just not a ton of super easy Dynamax candidates. We see that the Dracozolt and the Tyranitar are great Dynamax candidates both. They can both dish out a ton of damage and they don't need to Dynamax. Uh, but Pokemon like Lele, Hitmontop, Zamazenta, and Scorch either being unable to Dynamax or just not uh, the 
you know, ideal Dynamax candidates, very niche options. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100%. The two Pokemon that he didn't, that we didn't talk about today are Sil Valley, which I believe Sil Valley doesn't get Tailwind? It does not get, it used to get Tailwind. Okay, used yeah. to. Okay, yeah. all right. So Sil Valley is one, and then Raikou. So he does have some more electric support. I could see that coming in, coming up with uh, uh, maybe Dracozolt or something, but you're right. The speed control is definitely an issue, and he'll want to really pick his uh, Dynamax coverage uh, well. Something I noticed with playing with Zacian and Zamazenta, you know, it's it's when you really think out before you bring them out, you're like, exactly. this is my max candidate because um, they really are great to play with, but it's something you really have to figure out before you bring them out. So I agree. Cool, but it's a good team. <clears throat> okay, yeah, Wicked Weavile, mm -hmm. Zach. Man, this is the Calyrex Sh Shadow Rider Lunala. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I still can't believe that these, uh, these, these things don't have these things built in. But man, this is a tough Pokemon. Another tough team. Uh, came out, picked out, picked up Shadow Rider and then Comfy in the first two rounds. Uh, some of the strengths, okay, obviously going to put on an immense offensive pressure. And then what did he do to go along with that? Turned around and picked up Ndidi. You know, oh, what, what else can go along with that? Oh, let me pick up Prima Marina. And then what else can I do that? I can put uh, something that uh, gets faster in the terrain. How about Halucha? <laughs> so, you know, and then I got Weavile. I got some fake out support, you know. So really, really good um, overall, really good Pokemon. It's got redirection support. Um, great offensive coverage now. I mean, Indeedee can come out and do psychic spam on him. Yes. Um, you know, Pre-Marina can come out and spam, you know, over over and over. Halucha can offer that unburden ability. And then, of course, you've always got Weavile, which we know how fast it is, and it's got those really great ice moves. And Weavile making it, making it uh, to the barely missing it, and then Halucha, we know, um, made it as the finalist for oh, last yeah, season that's right. so yes yeah that's right very very good pokemon that we all didn't expect to make it that far yeah so. yeah and calyrex shadow rudder is really tough to deal with anyway yes. but then um, if if comfy is like healing at every turn it's gonna be rough <laughs> it's gonna be really rough so so you're probably glad you're talking about pod b so <laughs> <laughs> so how about some of the weaknesses so one of the main weaknesses that i saw right away was there isn't a lot of speed control uh we see that the halucha does have unburdened yes but uh besides that the pokemon are either very very fast and i'm talking <clears throat> cal calyrex fast weavile fast or they're really really slow like pre marina and registeel which is unlisted so uh, Trick Room is definitely going to be not an issue, but it's going to be something to uh, prepare for heavily because that Calyrex, you're going to want to bring it nearly every time. And if it's stuck in Trick Room, it is just a nightmare for you. Yeah. As it's one of the fastest Pokemon in this game. Yeah. Like the other team we talked about, it has a Comfy, can reverse Trick Room. Correct. But if it's not on the field or it's gone, kind of stuck. Exactly. Yeah. And the last thing to note for the weaknesses is a ton of support Pokemon. We got Ndidi, Comfey, we have Halucha, which we saw last season, and then we have Weavile, traditionally a um, support Pokemon. So we got four out of the eight pretty much support Pokemon. Yep. So that's going to be one thing to consider going forward is might not have a ton of uh, late game offensive pressure if you bring a ton of these mons. Yep, absolutely. And then, oh, I just wanted to point oh, out yeah. that they have Registeel and Rhyperior. Yes. So that is something. If they know they're going up against a hard room, hard trick room team, could just break out the Rhyperior. True. And, uh, and um, you know, that's always a good Pokemon in trick room as well. So. I agree. All right. So here we got Cole in the dork types. <laughs> I love that name. That's great. Um, had a really good draft. Evil Tall fell down to them um, at this spot. And I know it fell in your in your league too. It's weird it because I think what happened is a lot of us got in our mind that it wasn't going to be available to us or this wasn't going to be available. So we got our mindset on another Pokemon and then it went and we were like, oh God, it's, I can't believe it's there. And some of us already had our mindset on another Pokemon. So anyway, long story short, Evil Tall fell down there. Cole scooped it up. Really good pick. And um, some of the strengths, obviously, right off the bat, tons of offensive pressure. I agree. Yeah. And then um, picked up Zorark which is going to be difficult because you could be staring across from Evil Tall out there and it's not Evil Tall at all. Could be staring across from a Blacephalon and it's not Blacephalon. So that's going to it's going to bring some mystery to that team. He has lots of resist and immunities. I mean, if you look in, looking over here, a lot of 3s and 4s, grass, I'm looking at grass, I'm looking at poison, I'm looking at psychic. And these are some of the big ones in the game, dark. Yes. I mean, you know, a lot of people have really good dark pokemon right now. So, and then he's got screen support. 
So Grimmsnarl, one of the best screen setters out there, one of the best pranksters out there. He can set, go out there and set screens for you all day long. So really, this is going to be, I mean, I really believe a really tough team. He's got some really big hitters and some good screen setters and, you know, with lots of support. So what, are, what do you think some of the weaknesses when you look at it? Right away, we can tell that one of the biggest weaknesses is going to be Trick Room. These Pokemon are all relatively fast or relatively frail, and they are not going to appreciate uh, handling Trick Room. And yeah. we do have some Pokemon that are unlisted that could probably do better, but that is one of the big things. Yeah. Uh, we have very little speed control. Um, the only speed control that I can think of is, is maybe Scary Face Grimmsnarl. And uh, oh, yeah. you did pick up all the dark types out there, Cole, if you're watching <laughs> this, so you don't have to worry about uh, Prankster not working on dark Pokemon because <laughs> yeah. you pretty much got them all. Um, one of the things that we're going to be looking out for, rock Pokemon, as with a lot of them, rock slides, bam. Um, but more importantly, dark types before, <laughs> ser or before Generation 6 were amazing, and then Generation 6 introduced fairy Pokemon. So that is going to be one of the toughest things that this team is going to have to deal with is the fairy Pokemon going up against it. If we added in Malamar, it would even have a fourth Pokemon weak to fairy. So yeah. definitely something to consider. Yeah. And those Pokemon that we left off were actually Corviknight and Malamar. So one of those Pokemon does heal, deal with uh, fairy Pokemon, but the other one also being weak to it. So it's definitely going to be something that's in the back of Cole's mind going into this draft league. Yep. Excellent. Okay. The Mewtwo's, and we've got Brody. Brody had, I think, an outstanding draft. Um, you know, had uh, has great offensive coverage, picked up Kyogre, Metagross, and Zapdos in the first three rounds. I mean, you know, you've got really good core there, and then turned around and picked up Garchomp. So if you just look at those first four Pokemon, I mean, you're looking at, I could bring those almost every week, and I've got a really great, you know, a really great starting four. Um, he's got weather support in there. Yep. You know, he can bring the rain. He Dreadnought is double speed in the rain, and um, he's got the kind of the element of surprise we talked about. He can do weakness policy on Metagross. He could do weakness policy on Garchomp. He could scarf his Kyogre. He's got Life Orb. He could do Assault Vest. He's got all kinds of options in here. Okay. I mean, so it's going to be a very tough team to deal with. It could be one of those teams when you face them, you you're really looking to play game one and prolong it as long as possible to learn as much as you can about it so that you, you're you like, okay, if I do lose, I need to identify as much information as possible so that when I come into game two, I know what the items are. Yeah. Because uh, if if you lose quickly in that game and don't learn enough information, uh, it could be very bad for you. I agree. Yeah. And so some of the weaknesses, though, we noticed were... Yeah. Uh, again, with a lot of these weather teams, you're gonna you're gonna have to watch out for competing weather teams. Anyone with a Groudon is gonna have a really nice matchup against Kyogre, being able to set the sun and you know uh, is slower than that Kyogre. So it just depends. You know, obviously different spreads, different weeks, but it's just gonna be rough having to switch in and out as Kyogre is one of those Pokemon <clears throat> that really enjoys the rain. Uh, one other thing is the ground types. We do have one ground type immunity, but three weaknesses. So it's going to be rough uh, going into that earthquake territory. As scarf Pokemon tend to be uh, commonly <laughs> ground types. So it's going to be rough there. And um, Trick Room, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the team and I see some very like middle tier speeds. Uh, we got Zapdos, who's fairly, fairly fast. And we got Garchomp, same there. Dreadnought, who's double speed in the... Um, in the rain, but otherwise, you know, the yeah. team is relatively fast. And so it might be difficult uh, traversing Trick Room. And the last thing is going to be, of course, uh, same with all these heavy hitters, is the competing Dynamax Pokemon. We see that Kyogre can Dynamax, Metagross, Zapdos, Garchomp, Dreadnought, even some of the unlisted ones. You're going to notice that yeah. a lot of these Pokemon enjoy to Dynamax, and you only get one per game, so it's going to be rough uh, if your one Pokemon that you wanted is not able to Dynamax, and you have to go with another one. This is definitely this team more than any other is one of those ones that have competing Dynamax. I mean, I yes. mean, he has five Pokemon that can Dynamax, absolutely, hundred uh, percent. The two Pokemon that he, we didn't talk about were Clefable, so he does have redirection support. Yes. Also, and Sceptile. So, um, you know, which I'm, I'm not overly seeing how Sceptile fits into here, but I think it's a very good Pokemon as well. Yep. So, okay. Awesome. Next one yeah. is <laughs> the host of the B 
team now the a team i don't know i'm not i'm not gonna go into that uh <laughs> the redacted unknown matt yeah so matt made it to the semifinals last season and so he got a later draft pick and he ended up picking zacian can you tell me how that happened I can't tell you how that happened because I was in that pod. Um, uh, but uh, all I know is I picked second and uh, um, I picked Xerneas. And um, uh, the reason I didn't pick Zacian is because, uh, or Zacian, however you want to say it, is because um, it couldn't Dynamax. Yeah. But I would not, I didn't value it that low. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't value it that little that I, um, that I saw it dropping that low. I really didn't. And I'm sure Matt didn't either. And Matt was just shocked. Yes. Yeah, it, it made it to his, his spot. So, um, yeah, pretty we, incredible. We can go over some of the strengths here. We got yeah. a ton of offensive pressure. You've seen me dish out with Reggie Gigas. We saw how good Landorus can be last season. And more importantly, the man, the myth, the legend, Zacian, one of the most offensive weapons out there. Mm -hmm. It's got great support going around it with that Mandibuzz and the Weezing. And then even Pokemon like Landorus, you may not see it as a supportive Pokemon, but that Intimidate is very useful going forward. Now, the last thing to note for that really, really strong uh, core here is that not many Pokemon want to Dynamax. So he knows every time who he's going to Dynamax. He has either mm -hmm. Landorus, but Landorus doesn't need to Dynamax. He has Regigigas. He has Entei, but Entei doesn't need to Dynamax. And he doesn't have to worry about Zacian having to Dynamax. And the thing is, is like you, if you start wheezing Zacian, is Zacian a Pokemon that you absolutely have to have its ability? Not really. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, you get a boost. You get a boost. But, yes. I mean, you know, he can do a Sword Stance with it. He can do a lot of things with it. They are doing subsets with it. I mean, it's amazing Pokemon. Um, you know, some of the weaknesses we did notice when, you know, we were looking at it, uh, I know you, you had uh, picked out was Trick Room. Um, a lot of these are faster Pokemon. You know, he's got some speed control with Mandibuzz, right? Yes. Um, but it doesn't slow anything down. Everything's faster here pretty much or even regigigas is faster here i agree so um he doesn't have any special attackers or very few special attackers right yeah. wheezing and wheezing is typically not is more of a support pokemon mm -hmm. um and his weakness to ground pokemon uh, it sound like a sound like a familiar story yes <laughs> and it's not it's not glaring but zacian entei and wheezing uh all weak to ground you know so when you look at that um really those are his weaknesses right now and then that's kind of nitpicking on some things um and the two pokemon that he doesn't have on here uh are melodic so he's got some uh support there for somebody tried to intimidate um his uh zacian he can start that off the bat and alolan executor so i thought that was interesting yes we are gonna have to see how yeah that works so that out. may be his answer to trick room so Last one for the B pod, we have Hawaiian Wormholes, the previous champion, Cade. Yep, the reigning champ. So if you wanted, uh, if you wanted to go over the strengths mm -hmm. here for his team, uh, yep. it's kind of a wacky team. So it I, is I'm kind excited. of a wacky team, and this is the team I faced this week. So this is definitely a, um, I, I would call it a rain team yeah. with a, with a Palkia. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got weather control with Politoed and Ludicolo. So Ludicolo turns into double speed in the rain. Barracuda also uh gets speed boost he's got tornadus who gives him extra you know Tailwind, yeah. extra speed control <laughs> um you know and he's got the swift swim i mean he's got all kinds of you know really great speed control options here he's got a very specific combination it's gonna be very hard to stop and so it's gonna be a real challenge uh for any team this week um, but you're noticing a theme here. He's got the water grass, the water, the water combo, water dragon, you know, the water. Yep. And then there's electric and there's the flying and so uh, electric. So it's 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 a more of a monotype team. Yeah. And so that's going to leave you more open to some weaknesses. And those weaknesses are, of course, going to be competing weather. If you face a Groudon or a Torkoal or a Tyranitar, it's going to be really rough because... Mm -hmm. A lot of these members rely on the rain, and having only one rain setter can be an issue every now and then. Uh, another thing is going to be those electric type Pokemon, barely missing out on a lightning rod Pokemon, having to settle with Jolteon with Volt Absorb uh, is going to be tough because Pokemon like Thunderous or like Raichu or Tapu Koko are going to be able to penetrate this team's weaknesses quite well. Uh, one thing also to note is that this this team doesn't necessarily like Trick Room. As we do see, there is a ton of speed control, but it is almost all fast speed control. We've got Barrascuta goes fast. Ludicolo goes fast. Palky is pretty fast. 
Tornadus, that's Tailwind. Jolteon's fast. We got Naganadel unlisted. That's really fast. Mm -hmm. So Trick Room is definitely going to be a <laughs> thing that Cade has in the back of his mind. And I think that's just Cade as a player. He yeah. has Trick Room in the back of his mind. Yeah. And he just goes out there. Yeah. And this is, it's just going to be a tough team to beat no matter yes. what. I mean, even though you could see the weaknesses are very few. We're kind of nitpicking on it. But uh, if you're not prepared for water, though, you're in huge trouble with this team. Agreed. Uh, and and um, also some electric. Um, because And then the Ghana down the back. We didn't mention Buzzwool. Yep. And so I'm not sure what he has in mind for the Buzzwool. But <laughs> yeah, picking it up last minute with yeah. a trade. So we're going to see how that goes. And do we know what he traded away? I can't remember. He traded away the... Uh, no, I don't okay. remember. <laughs> I can't remember. But it, I mean, it's not that important. But I <laughs> yep. know he traded Andrew, right? For, yes, he okay. did trade Andrew. Okay. So. All right, sounds good. Okay, so what we did here was Andy tiered the B, uh, the pod B tier uh, teams, and I tiered the pod A because we thought it would be kind of neat to bounce this against the end of the season and see yes. kind of where it is. Now, before we disclaimer, yeah, we're not tiering the, we're not tiering the players. This is not tiering your ability. This is not tiering anything else. This is just tiering your draft. Yep, and your Pokemon and your defensive abilities. This is it. So we're just hearing what we just went over. So, yeah, uh, yeah. So tell tell us what you overall what you saw. So overall, what I saw as the number one thing to get you in the S tier is a very solid offensive and defensive coverage. You'll notice that both of the, or I'm sorry, all three of the teams that made it to the S tier, we got the boys, Mewtwo's, and we got the un the redacted unknowns all had very good offensive and defensive coverage, which was something that a, a couple of the teams were lacking. Um, but they just they just had a pretty all-around great draft. Uh, not to, you know... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, very good draft. And uh, some of the ones in A tier just falling a little bit short, um, just missing that one key component that's going to set them over the edge. So as we saw with Cade and the Hawaiian Wormholes, just missing out on... You know, maybe a couple extra types in there for uh, type advantages against other teams. The electric type. Yep. Weakness, right. Uh, we got Behemoth Blocks not having a ton of Pokemon that can Dynamax, so that was the one notch. Uh, we got the Guardians, Spear Pillar Guardians, just had a lot of support Pokemon. Uh, maybe one less support Pokemon would probably put them in S tier. And we got the Wicked Weaviles, who has, again, a lot of supportive Pokemon, just one less Pokemon supporting, would have probably put them over the edge. Uh, a little bit down, we got the B tier. Um, a lot of these were just Pokemon that were really good, but not very cohesive with the team. So we got Misty Mountain Dragonites, choosing a lot of fantastic Pokemon, but I personally am just not seeing a lot of synergy. Same thing with the Killer Kongs there. Lots of good Pokemon that resist, but not a lot of cohesive uh, teamwork. And then we got the Impidimps, who just fell a little short because of those uh, many weaknesses to a different team. Uh, the Pokemon that I... Uh, the Pokemon Drafts, that I think could have gone a little bit better are Lumio City Shockers and the Dork Types. Uh, not to say that they're any worse than ever, everyone mm -hmm. else, but I think they probably could have capitalized on, on a couple other plays after looking back at the uh, remaining Pokemon as they chose either a ton of supportive Pokemon or just Pokemon that don't, you know, they have one common weakness. So Dork Types picking a lot of Pokemon weak to Fairy might need to consider that going forward. And then Lumio Shockers picking a ton of support Pokemon, so definitely going to struggle with who to bring, who to leave. Right. Now, move coverage can negate some of these things. That is yeah. correct. Yeah. Move coverage can negate some of these things, and also trades. Uh, you know, we saw that. You get four trades this season. That is true. Uh, I know, like, yep. Cade just used one of his trades, so um, he has three left. And as we move forward, we could see, I mean, we could see a lot of these teams move around and... and uh, you know, change a lot of those things around. I agree. Yeah. So, okay, great. Well, let's move on to pot A. Excellent. All so, right. I'll get, yeah, I'll get started here. Okay. So the uh, first one is uh, who had the first draft pick was Michael. And that was yes. the w Wicked Del Fox of the West is his team. And he went with Mewtwo and Cinderace right off the bat. I think Cinderace was his first pick. Correct. And um, so what are we seeing here right off the bat? We're seeing a lot of speed. Yes. Um, really great strengths uh, for speed. I mean, he's got Crobat. 
he's got Weavile, he's got Cinderace, he's got Mewtwo. Uh, very difficult to deal with, at least initially, either um, he's going to come with speed and great offensive coverage with those two, uh, Mewtwo and Cinderace, and then Gyarados. Um, so he's going to hit you like a truck right away, he can drop in, um, Intimidates on you, um, you know, or Moxie from um, Gyarados, but, um, you know, along with that great speed and strength can come some weaknesses. Yes. And uh, you want to talk about those? Those weaknesses are, of course, very common and prevalent. Same with the pod A as pod B. We've got a lot of weakness to rock, and I mean some of the most weakness to rock I've seen. Yeah, that's a lot. So rock slide is going to be a bullet to dodge. Uh, definitely look out for rock Pokemon going forward, uh, and also trick room. These Pokemon are all freaking fast, and I mean faster than Sonic. So <laughs> <laughs> Trick Room is going to be very tough to deal with. Um, another thing that's just, you know, same as some of the others, no weather control uh, can be a little rough, but not necessarily something that's that's needed. And then uh, bulky water Pokemon are just going to be rough in general, not having a real solid way to hit them super effective. Right, not with nothing like, like a Rillaboom or exactly. I mean, just something, Tapabulu, something like that. And we got to talk about the fact that he chose the man, the myth, the legend, Charmander, for the third season in a row. And he <laughs> has chosen Charmander, the mascot uh, of his last season, this season as well. And I was surprised because he took it in the eighth round and nobody else took it. So I was a little surprised. He didn't to even see. wait to the end. Huh? He, didn't, he didn't wait. He, he chose it and nobody else chose it before him. So that's good because I thought he was going to have a rage quit. <laughs> um, but that was really yeah. good. And then another Pokemon that That's we were funny. looking at that he chose was Cantonian Weezing. So going to be very cool to see him uh, put some of those Pokemon together and see those combinations come to life. Yeah, and he does have Gardevoir for the Trick Room, but again, it's kind of like everything else. Agreed. He's, that's just an opportunity to reverse it, really. Um, oh. Okay. All right, so we've got Sunsteel Strikers with Nick. I really, when I was evaluating this team, really like this team. Uh, I think he's going to have a really good season. Um, of, not just because he got Kyogre. Is that Kyogre or Kyogre? Huh. <laughs> Is that a Q? <laughs> uh, I guess it's just the way the, yeah. the Gs look. Yep. Uh, and then he picked up Amoongus and Metagross to, to round it out. He's got Raichu. Nice protection for Kyogre. I mean, talk about some strengths. Re weather control and abuse. Not only did he do all this, but somehow you guys let him pick up Kingdra like right before the end of the draft. Seventh, I'm like, seventh pick. How yep. is that possible? Yeah. Uh, um, so yes, uh, we did we did let Matt get a good pick later on, but you guys you guys <laughs> allowed some good picks later on too. I was like, how is this possible? Um, he has great offensive co coverage. I mean, we've all seen how powerful. Like right now, there are a lot of Kingdra Kyogre teams right now, really yeah. good because you can just bring Kyogre out, start the rain, back it out. It's double speed, real problem to deal with. Even if they change the rain, it's a really great Pokemon. You know, it may not be double speed anymore, but it's dropping, you know, max worm winds on you. So, and then he adds redirection. So with Amoongus. Yeah. And he's got sleepy, sleepy, you know, <laughs> you can do all that stuff. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Uh, so, of course, he's going to have some weaknesses with this kind of a team as well because of the weather. Exactly. And some of those weaknesses are going to be very common with a lot of these teams that you'll notice. Uh, Trick Room is definitely something to fear. In Series 8 in general, mm -hmm. Trick Room is definitely something to fear. Not very common. Yeah. However, with these draft leagues, you're going to see it a lot more than you would in the VGC community. Uh, there, we're also seeing not a lot of speed control. We have some very niche options, such as the Swift Swim and the Nuzzle, but right. not a ton of speed control in terms of Trick Room, Tailwind, uh, all those. Yeah. The next thing we got is um, there are no Grass Pokemon that are offensive and no Fire Pokemon that are offensive. So yeah. that's definitely something to consider is uh, the fire Pokemon. There are no fire Pokemon on this team, so it might be hard to deal with grass Pokemon as um, other teams would have a nice fire yeah. Pokemon to take care of it. I see what you're saying. I mean, and his other two Pokemon are Mantine, so it adds another another ripple there, and then yep. Tapu Bulu. Yeah. And so I, I see, I think I see what he's doing with the Tapu Bulu, you know, there. But it, um, it also could bring the terrain, which could actually hurt, uh, hurt him against another grass type. That is true. Um, so I, I'm sure he'll, he's already thought of that and what to do with that. But overall, really freaking tough team. I um, agree. It's going to be tough. This reminds me a lot of Cade's team 
even though Kate doesn't have the Kyogre. Yes. Uh, because of the different elements that it has around the around the rain. And I believe Brody, who picked Kyogre in your pod, also picked Metagross. Is that right? Yes, correct. So, so the, sounds like those two got together. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, yep. Awesome. Excellent. Yep, a really good one. Next one, the infamous Zygarde Kai, the only person to ever go undefeated in the regular series draft league of any of our seasons. Yeah, so <laughs> we are definitely looking forward to seeing how he gets away with, one, this incredible draft Yeah, pick. really good draft. And uh, two, we're going to see how he does with the weather control. He finally got his man, uh, Venusaur, back. Yeah. He got the Venusaur. No Torkoal this time. Or the nine tails, but we do have doesn't the look like he needed it. Groudon, <laughs> yeah. So we got great offensive coverage there with the Groudon, the Venusaur, and more importantly, Charizard. Now, why don't you tell us how powerful Charizard is? Oh man, <laughs> you know it's brutal. I mean, Charizard is the one Pokemon out there. It shouldn't happen, but in the sun, can one shot an Arcanine? Yeah. You know, and uh, and then not only that, it does residual fire damage on everything else you send in for what four or five turns. <laughs> Ten turns. To me. It seems like it seems like it never stops. Yep. So um, yeah, I mean the the offensive strength of, of his team is weather control, obviously. Yep. Um, you know, it, it, it's almost insane when I look in the it, this is his first three rounds. He got these three Pokemon. Yep. Uh, Groudon, Venusaur, and Charizard. Just insane. Um, but it's easy to do in a draft because you're focused on your own draft, and you know someone's doing this just like the. Uh, they did with the sand team in our league. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, he's got great offensive coverage. Honestly, one of the best offensive coverages out there. And then great speed control. Yep. If he's got that, if he's got that sun, he's double speed and he's one of the fastest things in the meta. He's even got Cresselia yeah. to set the trick room as well. He does. And you know what? Groudon we've seen is excellent in trick room. So he could come out with you and you're expecting double speed Venusaur and trying to do something. And he comes out with Cresselia and it's mental lerp. And you're like, oh no. You know, and oh, Groudon's just sitting there. Yeah. Groudon's just sitting there. And so, you know, you, you, you've got a lot of things to pay attention to. But we did notice some weaknesses as we were going through this one. And this is going to be uh, tough to swallow, but Ice moves, not Pokemon. As you'll notice, all of his Pokemon can hit Ice type super effective. Mm -hmm. But he is going to have to watch out for the occasional Ice Beam. Yeah. The Blizzard from some Pokemon that gets it. We've seen that Pokemon like Palkia get access to Blizzard. Yeah. Uh, and so you could do max Ice on a Pokemon. A Pokemon like Metagross get Ice Punch. Right. So it's definitely going to be one right, thing to consider. Right, the there. Exactly. Yeah. So Ice moves, not Pokemon. Another thing, just like anyone else, is going to be Weather Wars. You know, we're all going to be watching when Nick faces Josh and it's Groudon versus Kyogre, and that's one thing that Pokemon, like other Pokemon players that don't have weather, <laughs> don't have to worry about. So right, right, yeah, we have other, we have to figure out other ways to stop the weather. But in these these wars, it's tough because you're like, okay, you constantly have to either max Charizard or switch in Groudon, or you know, you're constantly trying to bring the sun. Exactly. And so yeah, but um, you know, uh, the two that we didn't talk about. Yep. Were Mimikyu, so a little bit more speed control if he wants it. Exactly. Um, you know, he's, uh, I wouldn't say guaranteed to get Trick Room off, but it's a really good way to get Trick Room off. I agree. Um, and then Reggie Drago, which is interesting because only drafted one other time and they were immediately returned to the pool. Yep. Uh, so I don't think it's a terrible Pokemon, but it's definitely a niche Pokemon in the draft league. And that is another Pokemon weak to ice. Yeah. So that is going to be something to watch out for. Yeah. So. Next, we got Rusty Apoms, one of my great friends, Austin, here. Uh, I'm just going to go over the strengths real quick. Mm -hmm. He's got great, great defensive and offensive coverage. You'll see a lot of resist and not a lot of weaknesses, as well as a ton of offensive pressure with the Lugia, the Landorus, the Suicune, and the Marowak, all having great coverage moves, Ghost, Fire, Water, etc. He's got great screen support with the Cleft Key, similar oh, yeah. to what you got. Yeah. And then he's got, you know, um, Redirection with the Tangrowth, which isn't even listed because it's just solid core. But with that being said, there are some weaknesses that we saw, and those were. Yeah, and, and before I get into that, I just want to say okay. I really like this team. Uh, coming from the other league, I just had a first chance to look at it, and it is like this is a lot of synergy. I mean, it really I it really does go well together. He's got things. He's got the Marowak to protect the electric from the Lugia. He's got the he's got the screen setter. He's got the Landorus out there. Hit him on top with the wide guard. I mean, it's almost like he thought of everything I in agree. this draft. He's got the he's got Suicune to set up the you know Tailwind. It's really really well thought out. Um, but he's got a lot of support Pokemon, mm -hmm. and I will tell you, 
I got bit in the tail last season having three support Pokemon, um, and I felt like I had to bring two of them every time, and it I just got crushed. Um, I really had my worst season ever, and it, it, and looking back at it and just a lot of self reflection, that was it. That was a big part of it. Um, was just too many support Pokemon, and so and he doesn't have weather control like a lot of other teams. No weather control. It doesn't mean you're you know anything. It just means you're gonna have to have a way to deal with it. Exactly. Yeah. So he does have the Marowak though, and that is going to um, that is going to uh, be nice for uh, dealing with you know uh, other the things. Electric ones, yeah, yeah, the electric ones and Suicune will get him through. A a lot of the water things and speed control and the two pokemon we didn't talk about you mentioned tangrowth which is nice it gets yep. rage rage powder right yes and it is a grass type and then he's got lucario so he's got a steel type that he can add to this too so exactly yeah he's re he's got a really well-rounded team though agreed now we got one of my favorite names of yeah, the this entire is the yeah this is the logo unacceptable <laughs> uh derek here He's got incredible speed control with this team as he's got the Sand Core, very similar yeah. to the other leagues. So we're seeing a lot of parallels. Yeah, he's got both of them. Huh? Yep. Yeah. And then we got uh, Porygon 2, great means of Trick Room, Thunder Wave. We saw people start using Eerie Impulse with it, so that's going to be hard to deal with. And then we got the great offensive coverage. So we got Pokemon like Dialga, which get all the moves in the book. They get mm -hmm. Flash Cannon, Earth Power, Dragon Move, Ice Move, Fire Move. They get all of them. And then we got Draco Zolt, who is incredible with its offensive coverage as well. So lots and lots of offensive coverage and pressure. Uh, and then we got some um, weather control as well with the Tyranitar, same as Cameron uh, from Pod B. Mm -hmm. Got the Tyranitar and the Draco Zolt both. Um, but with those comes a lot of Pokemon type weaknesses. So why don't you talk about? Yeah, those? and you know, so if I'm if I'm Derek, I'm gonna want to bring T Tar to most of my matches. I mean, it's a big hitter. You got weakness policy. You know, you got to watch out for grass types. Most of most people have a grass type or grass type move. You really got to watch out for that. You got pre marina that's also weak to grass, and then you got Muzzdale that's weak to grass. So if you know you've got that grass weaknesses, also fighting weaknesses. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got Dialga, Porygon 2, and Titar, also weak to fighting. Exactly. So some of your big three Pokemon there. And then finally, again, the ugly ground weakness rears its head, which most of us have. And well, no resist on this No team. resist of ground weaknesses. So nothing he can switch in whatsoever. And uh, and so it's going to hit, you know, hit, hit Dialga hard and Titar and Dracozolt. So Titar's kind of the, the big one. He's weak to... He's got, you know, glaring weaknesses to, yeah. to the most of them. But I'm saying that the last thing is the competing uh, Dynamax. I look at his team and I go, man, I love these Pokemon, but I want to max them all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dracozolt is one that I would love to max. Titar, I'd love to max. You know, you've got Dialga, weakness policy, Dialga, right? You know, um, I definitely would fight between which weakness policy I would want to put that on each week. Exactly. And so, you know, I agree with you 100%. He's got... He's got a good team, but those weaknesses, those three weaknesses, unfortunately, are really popular in every team. Very popular, especially with the introduction of Pokemon like Landorus and Rillaboom. And yeah, yeah. And I guess Pokemon. he does actually have one ground uh, resist. He does have Galarian Zapdos. That's true, yeah. yeah. Ground immunity, yep. yeah. So, And that's another Pokemon that wants to Dynamax, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta yeah. love it. Yeah, and he does have more speed control with Bronzo. He does. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so he's really he's really got that covered. I I see a good team here. He's gonna have to figure out how it all works together. Yes. Because Titar and Dracozolt say kind of like you know let's go you know let's go a little faster let's bring the sand and then the other the other some of the other Pokemon are saying no no, no let's slow it up. Yep. So maybe he goes slow up slow in the back slow up front you know and figures that out or or whatever. But overall he's got a lot of things covered and it's good, it could be a very tough team to deal with. Agree. So we get a lot of weather teams this season. Yes, we it's do. Insane. And we covered we covered both. He's got the bronze on yep. and the Galarian Zapdos is the yep. two Pokemon. But again, I love the love the name. Yes. <laughs> Next one, we got the Central City Lapras, who's Anya's team. Uh I'm not gonna lie, I was incredibly impressed with her first three picks, the solid firewater grass core. We've got Ho oh, Kartana, and Lapras. Mm. Very, yeah. very solid core there. Uh, we got amazing redirection. She ended up picking Butterfree as, I believe, her last pick, so that was great redirection. Uh, got awesome screen support with that Lapras, so going to definitely help out Pokemon like Kartana and Ho-Oh that really yeah. appreciate it. And great grass and water resist, which can be hard to come by. So 
Uh, Pokemon like water types, like uh, like we saw all those all water teams, definitely going to struggle with this team, even though it's got Ho-Oh, who's weak to water. Yeah, yeah. And you guys definitely, you guys should be shot for letting her get those first three Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Together, because it really is a great core. I mean, she could just start Lapras almost every time with Butterfree's redirection and get that get her that Aurora Veil up, yep. and it'd just be really tough to deal with. But uh, having said that, um, she does have some weaknesses to Electric and Rock. And uh, so that that's tough because, you know, you've got Lapras lo loves to take a weaker Thunderbolt <laughs> so it can get that weakness policy off, but nothing too crazy or too early on. And Ho-Oh doesn't want to take, you know, doesn't want to take anything like that. But then you've got Butterfree as well. Yep. So um, and then those same Pokemon are also weak to rock. Yes. So, you know, that could be an issue because really you've got both the Pokemon both weak to the same thing. They all share the same weaknesses. So uh, that is a concern um, that we, we have when we were looking it up. And then there's, again, like, uh, it's funny, the teams that own the weather, and then there's us that, and I'm saying I'm one of them, have haves and have nots. We have no weather control. Yep. <laughs> so uh, that's one thing that, um, you know, that we want to look at or possibly look at down the road if you, if you have a problem with it, is the no weather control. The uh, weather free riders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're like, we don't need weather. Yep. But you can max Lapras and then you're dropping water uh, moves. Max and then, Geyser, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then also same thing with Ho-Oh. So you're maxing and bringing the fire. So, right. Yep. And uh, we did not talk about Gengar, how that would fit in this, but one of the fastest Pokemon out there. Very and then fast. another fast Pokemon, Alolan Raichu. Yep. So um, I guess when we're talking about that, I guess we should, should have mentioned speed, huh? We were... Very, very fast Pokemon in Kartana, Ho-Oh, Alolan Raichu, yeah. Gengar, Butterfree, all very fast. Yeah, so I guess um, Trick Room is could be an issue too. Then. It could be, yes. Yeah, so definitely something to watch out for. Next, oh, yep. we got, uh, in my opinion, the best draft from my pod. We got Calyrex Coursers, Easton's team. Very, very good defensive coverage. We got a lot of resist and not many weaknesses at all. No Pokemon that are uh, no three times weeks at all. And uh, we also got great offensive pressure out of that. We got Calyrex Shadow Rider. Uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider Lunala. Yeah, um, <laughs> Lunala. And then we got uh, we got Entei, who's very offensive. We got Regigigas, who's very offensive. We've got Ferrothorn, who actually, believe it or not, can be be offensive uh, in its body presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely one thing to consider, and very good speed control with the Tornadus and the Regigigas and being Tornadus able to is, use Max Strike. And Tornadus is being used so often right now. Exactly. Uh, but with this, there are quite a few weaknesses that came up in terms of the technicalities. Like the other team we talked about in my league, this one is almost all, nearly all physical attackers. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if someone were to bring a strategy to, you know, um, Will-O-Wisp or, you know, they're bringing something, you know, that's uh, really good against the physical attackers, yep. it could be devastating for this team. Uh, charms, you know. Um, exactly. A breaking swipe strategy something like that so maybe a way to kind of balance that out a little bit by having some special attackers yep um and then also trick room so we also have i mean i agree ferrothorn's really good but beyond that there really isn't a whole lot to deal with trick room and exactly. then there's no weather control <laughs> yep. like you know like half the teams no exactly. weather control you have it or you don't and this is just one of the teams without weather control but they do have blastoise in the back and so they can deal with some, uh, they have some fake out support and some power up, you know, they can get some strong water moves that G-Max Blastoise is really nice if you yes. can get it going. And then they have some redirection with Volcarona. Which is, is nice. God, they, they really did have a great draft. I, I mean, Volcarona was, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying it was gone very early and it looks like maybe a later pick for them. It was really nice. It was. It was one of their later picks, and I was really distraught. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking maybe you'd scoop it up and nobody would see it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, a really nice draft by Easton. Next up, we got Pacific Log Meteors. Now, a lot of you <laughs> asked me if I spelled this wrong. I did not. This is uh, one of the towns in the Hoenn region. So if anyone's wondering what that is. I didn't know. It's kind, of a, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's kind of a uh, play on, on the uh, Pacific Log it's a town in the water. I, that's all I'll tell you about it. Oh, and this okay. is uh, this is Preston's team right here, and another pretty good uh, draft. Uh, definitely, definitely some strengths and weaknesses. So we'll go over those. Yeah. So um, first of all, great defensive coverage. I mean, you know, you've got you've got teams uh, a team with Umbreon. You know, gets moonlight and regenerate itself. You've got Gigalith. 
who's just perfect for weakness policy. And then you turn around and you got Palkia. So it's really, really bulky. And then you've got great speed control with the ultimate speed control, Whimsicott out there. Yep. And then strong, but also get strong offensive pressure. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, you've got Tapu Koko out there and Palky also hits, hits very strong like any other legendary. And then especially if you slap a weakness policy on it. Yeah. And then you've got weather control as well with the Gigalith. So um, overall, you've got a lot of really good strengths with this team. Uh, some of the weaknesses, though, uh, similar to Easton's team, there are not many physical attackers. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the opposite. opposite. Yeah. The opposite. Yeah. There are not yeah. many physical attackers. We've got Gigalith, uh, and we've got Durant, who's unlisted. But okay. other than that, they're all special attackers or supportive mons, which gets to our second weakness. There are a lot of setup and supportive mons. We've got mons like Tapu Koko, who are uh, becoming more supportive. Right. We've got Rotom, who likes to set up Nasty Plot. We've got Palkia, who likes to set up with a weakness policy. We've got Whimsicott, who likes to set up Tailwind. We've got Gigalith, who likes weakness policy setup. We've got Umbreon, who likes to set up with Moonlight. So, yeah, definitely a lot of setup and supportive Pokemon. Uh, something to consider going forward would be like maybe switching out one of those Pokemon for another offensive threat, potentially a physical offensive threat, yeah, like physical. Sand Slash, like something with uh, Sand Sand Rush. I was Rush just thinking the same great. thing. Something with Sand Rush or Sand, you know, uh, even would Stoutland. Be great. Stoutland yeah, would Stoutland, be a great one, too. Yeah, normal typing in there would give them. But I will say, as far as their weaknesses go, they did a really good job. Very good job. Um, they they do a great job on their resist and their, their weaknesses. It looks like when they were drafting, they were thinking of this up, up ahead. Even if they weren't, they got very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so really good draft overall. But I agree, could use a little bit more punch on that, on that side. And we got the last uh, two Pokemon that we didn't talk about are Landorus Incarnate, which gives a little bit of... Uh, Weakness to ice, not not too terrible of an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, one more weak to water, that's okay. It is a, a special attacker most of the time. So, um, And then we got Durant, who uh, is definitely a Pokemon that you want to Dynamax, so is going to be competing with Gigalith and Palkia. Next, we got myself, so I'll, I'll let you oh, just okay. take it away. All right. <laughs> yeah, so actually, I, I mean, being honest, I, I thought Andy had a very good draft, uh, a really good draft, actually, because... You know, um, evil tall Comfe setting its own weakness policy. Um, nobody, nobody uh, let the let anybody have that in our league. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, somebody uh, took evil tall, and a different person took Comfe. So, uh, so that was a pretty. Uh, that's pretty tough. He's going to be able to uh, get that off because it has such a high priority. Uh, you can't really stop Comfe, I guess, unless you. I mean, he can't taunt it out because it's <laughs> goes first. Yeah, it goes first, so <laughs> and it's gonna. It's pretty yeah. much gonna get that weakness policy off. Uh, so, and then you know, Ludicolo is gonna be great against rain teams. I mean, you know, you got a ground type. So anyway, he's got really good offensive coverage. He's got Thunderous, who is fantastic right now. And the and then you can make it a prankster, or you can also make it a defiant, and uh, park it out there, and they try to intimidate you. But the thing is that the element of surprise, which is what I really liked, was okay. So the Arcanine. One week, is it justified or is it intimidate? He could just max it up and then do beat up. Um, and I already talked about the Defiant one. And then the Mold Breaker and the Excadrill for those unique abilities uh, that we could come across. So he really, the the it's not just the great offensive coverage, but it's also like you can do different things with each of the Pokemon. So it was pretty well, it was a very, very well thought out draft. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Al, let's talk about what you sucked at. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> it lasted. All right. <laughs> okay, so not really any speed control. Um, you do have Comfe. You can reverse uh, your own Trick Room, and uh, you do, um, but you really don't have a ton of speed control beyond that. I agree with that. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody, um, you could drop your own Rockfall with Excadrill, and you can bring your own Sand, or, you know, <laughs> you have to get creative. Um, your Rock Pokemon. You you've probably see that down there. You have uh, you have three Pokemon that are weak to weak to rock. Evil Tall is one of them, uh, Arcanine, and then the Thunderous. So you know um, you know we're nitpicking on some of these things. Uh, Trick Room. You have a fast team. So I'll you agree know, with that. Yeah, you have a fast team. You don't want to see Trick Room, um, but you can try to reverse it with Comfy. But re overall, you're going to try to keep from getting Trick Room. You do have Fake Out support and different things, and I believe Thunderous even gets taunt. Uh, so you can probably yep. shut down. Yeah, you can shut down uh, Trick Room a lot of time. And then you are going to have a problem that a lot of people are in this league, which is we have some strong Pokemon, and you're going to want to Dynamax several of them. 
Uh, somebody kicks off your Defiant, you're going to want to Dynamax that. Even if you brought Evil Tall and you're like, oh, I really want to Dynamax Evil Tall, you're going to be like, <laughs> oh my god, I really want to Dynamax Thunderous now. So that's going to be tough for you. Um, if if uh, if you're facing a Kyogre, you're going to want to Dynamax Ludicolo. Uh, because you know you're like I don't know if I'm gonna be strong enough to take it out if I don't Dynamax exactly it. so yeah and then the last two Pokemon that you didn't bring the the infamous Kling Clang <laughs> yeah the Pokemon that never nobody ever drafts ever uh, yeah which I'm sure everybody was like what why did you draft that so I guess everybody have to wait and see I'm um, not quite sure either and then uh, Kang uh, Kang is gone so I know that you know we can you can do uh, extra things with Ghost types they got Ghost types do different things so that'll be an interesting one. And uh, so I don't, I'm sure you don't want to tell anybody else anything else about that. I was <laughs> aware that Kangaskhan no longer megas. Don't you worry. No, okay. All I right. didn't forget. All right, it doesn't mega. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But no, overall, really good team. I just some just some of the really when we talk about some of the weaknesses, some of the same things we've already covered with some of the other teams. Yep. All right. And next we got Bridger Squad, Squad, one of the. Uh, teams that has made it to the top cut every time that he's gone. I know. He's been so consistent. Yes. Uh, now, I'm not going to lie. I was a little confused by some of his draft picks this season. So we're going to be really excited to see Bridger turn around and screw us all uh, <laughs> by just Telling us absolutely beating yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I look forward to the day when he can just crush me and I'll eat my own words. But... Uh, that being said, he has a ton of strengths on this team, being incredible defensive coverage. He has Pokemon that resist. He has Pokemon that are immune. He has yeah. lots of Pokemon that resist everything. And more importantly, they're all defensive Pokemon. Like Clefairy's defensive, Politoes defensive, Gothitelle, Trevenant, Persian, all defensive Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, he has a cohesive Tyler Trap. I'm sorry, Parish Trap. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. No. Yeah, this I is definitely uh, this. Tyler. Tyler from the last two years yep. has done you know something similar to this, and I know that you know uh, they're good friends and they work together on teams like this. Yes. So uh, we we definitely are not going to look forward to playing teams like this. I'm glad he's in your pod. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so uh, very cohesive Parish Trap yeah. though. So that's going to be one thing to watch out for for everyone uh, because that is a great strength. He's got amazing speed control mm -hmm. with the Persian, the Gothitelle, the Trevenant, even Pokemon like Zacian. Yeah, he can run Icy fast. Wind on Persian. Exactly. Yeah, so he can do Icy Wind. He can do Trick Room. He can do all sorts of stuff. Yep. And he's got Redirection with that Clefairy. Going to be great for that Zacian as he likes to stay nice <clears> and healthy. And more importantly, Weather Control being that Politoed. So going to weaken the fire moves for both the Zacian and the Trevenant, which yeah. is going to be really nice. Absolutely. That being said, we've got some big weaknesses to go over, so why don't you... Yeah, okay, so when it, it, the first one, it says no Dynamax Pokemon. Yeah. I wouldn't really say that, but I would say a very limited, though, uh, Dynamax Pokemon. I'm going to go ahead and mention right now, his other two Pokemon are Dragonite and Jinx. Yes. I wouldn't say Jinx is one of the Pokemon I would regularly Dynamax, okay? So I would say, if you say Dragonite, great. Dragonite is probably a good Dynamax candidate. A weakness policy Dragonite. So I'm not going to Dynamax Persian, not Gothitelle, unless you make a competitive dog Gothitelle, which I did before and I yeah. Dynamaxed it once. But, um, you know, you're not going to Dynamax Politoed, nope. not going to Dynamax Clefairy. You can't Dynamax Zacian. So you're talking about really Trevenant and Dragonite yeah. are the only two uh, Pokemon typically you're going to Dynamax. And if you add a Jinx to that, that's like three Pokemon. Yep. So if you saw those three Pokemon, maybe Gothitelle, you're like, okay, you could be expecting a Dynamax. Mm -hmm. That's all we're seeing right now. But I, I have a feeling Bridger's always smarter than all of us, so <laughs> he's got something up his sleeve. And so we're not seeing as much offensive pressure from this team as we have from previous Bridger teams. I agree. Um, but Zacian is tough. And with redirection, with like he's got, uh, you, you know it's coming. So he um, he does have Zacian still, and he does have Trevenant. And then he, but he does have some competing, uh, some competing weathers too. Yeah. As far as he's got the um, he's got the rain there, and then he's got you know um, really not there's not a lot of synergy with the to go with the rain as far as double speed or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. He's gonna have to worry about like sun teams. Mm -hmm. and, and exactly. All yeah. Exactly. But what I really seeing here when I look at this team is I'm looking at a ton of strategy, gonna try to trap you on the field, wear you down, uh, and perish you out, and that's what I'm seeing. But I don't know. I'm not in that pod. So I'm hoping you guys can get rid of him before the playoffs and somehow I make the playoffs. 
<laughs> that we don't have to worry about. Then we'll never have to see it again. Yep. <laughs> so Excellent. anyway, yeah, you got it. Okay, okay. got it. <laughs> Sweet. Next one, mm. we've got our previous finalist, Cloud City Whimsicott. Yeah. Abe here, uh, and I'm not gonna lie. Okay, you see a lot of red on the screen. We'll get into that. But he has some great strengths. He has huge offensive pressure with Pokemon like Qrem, Rillaboom, Colossal, and Cobalion. Very offensive pairs to go with his team. And he's got that surprise element that a lot of us have been lacking in the previous um, the previous draft leagues, where he can go with Colossal Steam Engine with the Sneasel. He can go with the Beat Up with Cobalion. He can do Qrem with a Weakness Policy. He can do any of those combos, and you wouldn't know off of the off of the team alone because he's going to yep. bring a lot of these Pokemon. You're just going to see it start, and then you're going to be like, "Oh shoot, I didn't bring anything to get rid of Sneasel. I'm done for." Yeah. So it's definitely going to be rough. Uh, and that being said, he does have great speed control with the Talonflame and the Sneasel, being able to activate the Steam Engine on on Colossal. Yeah, Gale Wings being able just to go first, you know, with Talonflame. That'll be nice. Uh, so, some of the weaknesses um, that we noticed when we were looking at this, uh, fire. Uh, fire, he has three Pokemon that are weak to fire, Rillaboom, Sneasel, and Cobalion. Uh, and so, you know, and some of those are, I mean, obviously he has Colossal on his team, he has Talonflame on his lead exactly. team. Um, he's also weak, has a weakness to uh, fighting. That's the biggest, fighting and rock are the biggest, most glaring weaknesses. He has four Pokemon on each of those. Yep. And really, really common. Now, let's say rock's not as common, but fighting is really common. Very common. Yeah, so that's going to be tough. And then he has competing Dynamax Pokemon as well. When I looked at this team, when I first looked, I was telling, I think I told you, I was like, yep. it's kind of like three teams. <laughs> it is. Uh, he's got the Qrem, he's got the Colossal, and then he's got the Cobalion. Now, if I'm preparing for a team like this, it's really tough. I agree. Because um, you're like, which team is he going to bring? He could bring two teams um, every time, two different teams every time. Um, obviously, Beat Up and Colossal are very similar strategies I to agree. defend against. Um, but, uh, you know, it makes it very tough. But it also, I think, makes it difficult for him to play um, as well. So the two Pokemon that he didn't bring um, are Jellicent. So it does give him a Trick Room. Yes. And uh, some, uh, you know, some diff different coverage as a Ghost type. Uh, and then he's got Clefable. So he's got some redirection. Yep. So if he gets one of these things going, and gets it maxed up and gets it going, he does offer some redirection help. Exactly. So. All awesome. right. And we yeah. got the final person here, yeah. the Rainbow Guardians, Steven. Yeah. Steven came a little bit short. He did make top cut last season, which was the first top cut he's made, so great there. And he's going to see if he can do it again with this team, the Solgaleo, Incineroar, Garchomp, Rotom, Ninetales, Sableye, and then two more. So some of the strengths right away, he's got great defensive coverage being the Solgaleo, Incineroar, and Rotom core. Uh, those three just covering each other's weaknesses very well. Uh, and he's got great offensive coverage being the Solgaleo and the Garchomp together. Um, that being said, he's got a lot of versatility. He can switch in and out with Incineroar and Rotom. He can Nasty Plot. He can set screens. He can do Quash with Sableye. He's got a lot of stuff. And a ton of immunities here, which is very nice. And none of the immunities, if you see, are, are the same. So he's got Sableye immune to normal. He's got Garchomp immune to electric. He's got Sableye immune to fighting, poison immunity for Solgaleo, psychic immunity for Incineroar. He's got ground immunity for Rotom. And he's got dragon immunity for Ninetales. So tons of immunities. Yeah, looking really strong. Yep. Yep. Um, when we look at some of the weaknesses, when I was looking at this team, you know, he... He has a lot of support Pokemon. By the way, was Nick upset that he took his Sableye? He wasn't upset. We actually spoke to him, and he <laughs> sounded relieved. Okay, all right. <laughs> that, he, that it wasn't going to be there, and he didn't have to worry about taking exactly. it? Exactly. That it wasn't going to get picked? Okay, I just want to make sure. So, um, at first, he starts off, and he's picking, and it looks everything looks good, but then he picks... To me, Ninetales kind of support Pokemon. Yes. Don't get me wrong. I know Blizzard. You know, I've get, It's got some attacks. But, you know, it's kind of set, sets a roar veil, right? And then you know, you've got Sableye, and then Incineroar is more of a support Pokemon. So he's got a lot of support Pokemon. Uh, the other Pokemon that he's got are Togetic and Galarian Slowbro. Both support Pokemon. Yeah, pulls Trick Room and, you know, Redirection. So he's got a lot of support Pokemon there. This is what I'm seeing. But he does have some strong attackers. He doesn't have any weather control I... um, besides Ninetales. Yeah, I... Yeah. <laughs> uh, besides that, he does have Ninetales, though. Ninetales yes. does bring it, and he could switch Ninetales in and out and make it a real nightmare for somebody. So I guess the better weakness term is niche yeah. weather control. Yeah, and nothing really takes advantage of his weather control. True. And actually, I would say that something um, 
to look out for is that Garchomp and some of the other ones are really hindered by his weather control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying it, 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 it could come at a bad time, but Steven plays so well, and I don't see him really using it to where it would hinder any of his any of his Pokemon. Yep. Um, and then we say no speed control again. Yeah, I mean, he's got slow bro, but um, I don't think Sableye, does Sableye get Icy Wind and stuff? Maybe it does. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it does. Yeah. But other than that, but yeah, he's got fake out support, things like that. Um, yep. But yeah, he's going to really have to kind of play around the speed of the other team. And yep. so kind of a mixed speed team, which he, he's able to do. Yeah. So. Okay. So after this, I was able to uh, sit down with Andy and I, I uh, was able to, I sat, excuse me, sat down with him and I was explaining to him how I tiered the different teams. And he agreed. He agreed with me. Yeah, I do uh, agree. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so obviously he agreed that his team was at Our S tier. number one. <laughs> <laughs> but I had Sunsteel Strikers, uh, the Reshirams, and uh, the Coursers, the Calyrex Coursers up top in S tier. These are the team, the three teams that I felt had kind of addressed all of them. As far as their defensive coverage, as far as their draft, I just felt like overall they're, you know, going to be really tough to beat as far as, you know, everything. They don't have everything covered, but they're probably in the S tier range. Right behind them, nipping on their heels, and, and this is tough too, is you guys have four teams, Rusty Apalms, Rainbow Guardians, and uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Central City Central Lapras. City, yeah. Uh, and Zygarde, Zygarde Kai. Uh, you, are, you are right there with them. Uh, really close, you know, um, maybe just a little thing here or there. Uh, maybe it's the weather. Uh, maybe, it's, uh, maybe it's four times weakness in one area. And then the B tier teams we talked about were just, it was that next kind of level. Yeah. And if you remember what was unacceptable behavior was the... He just had like... Is it, is it the special attackers of, or the physical attackers, right? We talked he about. He had a lot of Pokemon that wanted Dynamax. Okay, that's right. Almost Competing Dynamax. And then the Pacific Log Meteors. I, I remember the other team was yes, like... he had very few physical attackers. That's right. Okay, so it was, it was that, and that's what falls into the B tier. And the C tier were the ones, and we just talked about Bridger's team, yep. were, were mostly support you know, Pokemon. We're not seeing a lot of heavy hitters. We had Abe's team. You know, which Lots of weaknesses. Not a, lot of co not a lot of cohesive and a lot of weaknesses. And then we had uh, Michael's team, which yep. we went over right at the beginning. So which w w was, again, same thing. Weaknesses and then the cohesiveness yep. of the, how they're going to work together. So, I mean, we have to rank everybody somewhere, and that's kind of where we came out. So we actually put all the tiers together, yep. and we came up with an Our Dads Play tier list for the Season 4 League. Yep. And that's where we're at. So this is where we see the teams kind of right now. And after week three, and all the S tiers are 0 and 3, this is, uh, this is we'll, we'll redo this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, uh, I, we have no clue, of course. But no, we thought it would be kind of fun to rank the teams, uh, to rate the teams based on, you know, their defensive coverage, just basically just on the draft. Of course, gameplay is a totally different thing. And that's what makes this so much fun, is that these games aren't, aren't played on paper. Yep. Exactly, and we're we are gonna see it. We're gonna see Bridger swipe, <laughs> sweep all of us. Yeah, and we're probably gonna see myself just drop five games. Don't yep. you worry. So yep, and Whimsicott's, you know, <laughs> surprised everybody last season. He did. Do it again this season. Exactly. So it just keeps getting better. So we're looking forward to it, and uh, and uh, I don't have anything else. Well, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining the league, uh, and I hope you guys are all gonna have fun. We got ten weeks of this, and. If anyone wants to see any more videos like this, you should let us know because they were a lot of fun to film. Yeah. And they're going to be a lot of fun to watch, hopefully. So if you stuck around to the very end, because I know there aren't going to be everyone, you should comment and say, Our Dad Plays Legends League is the best. Otherwise, we will see you guys next time. Again, I'm Andy. And I'm Jason. And we are Our Dad Plays. We'll see you. Take care.